Hi, thank you for joining this mini webinar. It's going to be really, really crisp and short to the point webinar. Before we get into the presentation, let me just take a couple of minutes to introduce myself. I am CA and Raja, Chartered Accountant by Qualification, a teacher, trainer by passion. I started my career as a banker, credit analyst with State Bank of India, worked for a period of four years. In very short period, I had the opportunity of becoming team leader, credit processing cell. So worked on 250 plus projects, it's 5000 crore plus size. Then came out and started my CA practice, had my practice for a period of seven and a half years alongside had this teaching training. Thanks to technology, today through online, I teach two lakh plus students all over the world, basically on banking, credit and financial analysis and majority of them are working banking executives. I'm really glad that my courses are helping them and I'm sure this course will be relevant and useful for you as well. Let's get into the webinar. In this session, I'll take you through the difference between DSCR and FOIR. First, let's look at the meaning. What do we mean by DSCR? When we say DSCR, it stands for debt service coverage ratio. Here, banks and financial institutions are basically going to measure the repayment capacity of the borrower for the term loan they have availed for a project. So what is the focus? The focus is measuring repayment capacity of the borrower. Then what is FOIR? FOIR stands for Fixed Obligation Income Ratio. And here also bank is going to measure the repayment capacity. But here it is measuring the repayment capacity of the borrower with reference to it can be a business loan, a mortgage loan or a long term loan. But both the ratios, they basically measure repayment capacity. Okay, what is the formula that is used in these ratios? First, let's look at DSCR. DSCR ratio, the formula numerator is cash accruals and denominator is obligation. How this cash accruals is calculated? It is calculated as profit after tax. Then it is added back by depreciation because it is a non-cash item. Then it is added back by interest on term loan because we want to know what is the cash profit before paying interest. So for that reason, we add back interest on term loan. This goes to the numerator. Whereas in the denominator, it will be interest on term loan plus principal commitment. So this will be calculated for each and every year so that DSCR of each and every year can be understood and arrived at. Whereas FOIA, the formula is like this. It is fixed obligation divided by income. And when I say fixed obligation, it is the fixed obligation with regard to the present loans which are running and the future loans that is proposed. Okay, so this fixed obligation is basically the summation of EMI, which includes interest and principal. So you should factor both the present running outstanding loans commitments as well as the proposed loan commitments that goes to the numerator. Whereas in the denominator, it is income. When we say income, this is cash profit. And this is one distinct difference when compared with DSCR. Here, when we take the income in FOIA, that is the cash profit, it is freezed as per last financial information. That is, if the customer is approaching now, let's say we are in December 20, the customer is approaching loan now for let's, let's say next five years. For next to five years, what will be his cash profit? That will be based on his last submitted financials. In next to five years, he may earn more. He may have more cash profit, but that will not be taken into consideration. Okay, so that's the distinct point when it comes to FOIA because in DSCR, what you are going to do is you are going to arrive at cash profit for future and in future, this cash profit can be estimated to increase. That's what I have in next point. Look at here, how cash source is measured. If you take DSCR, it factors estimated projected cash flows, which can be based on future cash profits. 
and this future cash profit can be estimated to increase let's say for example a customer approaching a bank for a term loan to start a business it means this business will acquire assets using that asset they will produce product then they will make sale then out of that they will make profit and using that profit they will service a loan okay in those cases dscr will work out even for existing businesses which are going for expansion it's possible that their cash profit can increase from their present level in those cases also dscr will work out but wherever this foyer ratio is used it is always based on cash profit asset last year it will be pegged at that level let's say for example the cash profit of the last year is 1 crore and they have come for a term loan let's say repayable over a period of 5 years a term loan let's say like a mortgage loan now for the next 5 years their annual cash profit will be freezed at 1 crore so with that 1 crore whether they will be able to service the loan or not that's what getting measured whereas in dscr it is possible that this 1 crore can increase because of change in sale because of change in capacity because of change in fixed assets so that element will be accepted in dscr but not in foyer okay so this is how cash source is measured then what are the obligations that are considered because in both the ratios what we are doing we are comparing the income and obligation okay what obligation i think here both dscr and foyer does the same job dscr factors running past loan obligations as well as the proposed loan obligation foyer also factors running past loan as well as the proposed loan obligations okay when dscr is suitable when foyer is suitable dscr is suitable for project financing let's say like term loan because this is going to involve estimation projection it's possible future revenue can be estimated projected to increase same the profits and cash profits whereas foyer can be used for medium to long term loans where the repayment is based on existing cash profit existing capacity that's why generally we see this in mortgage loan uh, business loans and all right and what is the minimum acceptable level if you take uh, dscr the minimum acceptable dscr for each and every year throughout the loan tenure will be like 1.5 times every year of course it could vary bank to bank depending upon the bank's risk perception conservative bank will say something like 1.5 times whereas the banks which are ready to take a little bit of risk they'll go even up to one time okay this is every year that is if the loan is for 5 years for each and every year the ratio should be at least 1.5 and average dscr will also be calculated which which should be at least 1.75 and again it can vary bank to bank that's about dscr whereas foyer it is calculated in a a kind of a reverse model because we are comparing the fixed obligation with the income okay so fixed obligation is seen as a proportion of income so it should be between 40 to 55 percentage so if fixed obligations are greater than 55% it means they are leveraged they may not become eligible for financing but on the other side if foyer is below much below say somewhere like below 40% it indicates they have much of repayment capacity okay so these are the broader differences even other differences can be added but these are all the differences which i wish to add Are you a bank executive looking to advance your career in credit or advance profile in SME and corporate banking? Do you want to learn the pre-sanctioned credit and financial analysis skills that are essential for success in this field? If so, then our course, Credit and Financial Analysis Mastery Bundle for Bankers, 
is for you. In this comprehensive and structured online course, you'll learn the pre-sanctioned credit underwriting process, covering credit analysis and financial analysis specific to SME and corporate banking credit. You'll be guided through each and every step of the process, from understanding the basics of credit analysis to assessing term loans as a banker. With 15 modules and a variety of ebooks and other resources, you'll have everything you need to master this highly sought after skill. Our course is pre recorded, so you can access it anytime, at your own pace, without disturbing your official working hours. Plus, you can access it as many times as you'd like and even download it to your mobile device for offline viewing. When you complete the course, you'll receive a certificate of completion. And with lifetime Q&A support through our Telegram group, you'll have access to the guidance and support you need to succeed. Don't miss this opportunity to advance your career in credit and financial analysis. Enroll in our course today and take the first step towards a successful banking career.